This is Romy here, and welcome back to Deckerman. We are here, about to go to sleep, and I guess wake up and be like, all right, <laughs> what is happening? I wonder if you sleep soundly tonight, or will the fear that someone might come for you have you trembling until morning? I study Ragnar's unusual bright eyes, but it's hard to tell if he's being serious or not. Whoever shall come to me with a sword from a mop shall he perish. I definitely slip through the door and close it behind me before Ragnar has a chance to say anything. Finally alone. First things first, I need to figure find out how mom is. It's late and I don't know what I should tell her, but I'm worried I still leave a voice message while trying to sound as cheerful as possible, even though my voice is a bit tired. I tell her I ended up staying late at the vet clinic and I'm spending the night at a fellow volunteer's house. I've never done anything like this before, but it's the most plausible lie I can think of. At the very least, I hope she doesn't think my life is in danger. Still being alone by myself in a long-awaited silence of this room and no longer being pressured for attention, I have time to rethink the situation. Um, listen. <laughs> I don't know if I should play if I was, like, literally in her mindset or play how I would go with it. I'm gonna go with how I would go with it. Because, obviously, I can see their powers. Something is happening. We went through a subway door to a different door to a different dimension so everything you thought was reality is out the window now anything is possible so i would personally give the kwanzis another chance because hopefully my girl gets some rest her her emotions are a little settled down i don't know what else to tell her <laughs> yeah it's unusual for me to, to act the way i did today i'm normally not so mistrustful and i tend to look for the best in people of course the kwanzi's behavior was bizarre not to mention suspicious but maybe their ri ridiculousness was all coincidental in fact in the considerable amount of time that i've spent with my kidnappers not a single hair on my head has been touched compared to what happened at the university which was clearly an attack maybe if i try being more friendly things will become a become clear much more much more quickly i plop down i love this soundtrack by the way it's very calm and soft i plop down the bed and bump up against something a backpack and it looks suspiciously like mine i open it to examine my things and notice that its contents and even the way it's packed looks exactly how i would have packed it considering the night incident i'm sure this is mark's handiwork mark is a mysterious panty thief mark is a nasty pervert i actually like mark but i don't think we can like go after him He's a mysterious panty thief. I giggle imagining the dark and mysterious Mark rummaging through my underwear drawer. I feel like he just grabbed whatever. He's like the most handsome to me. <laughs> really? Has this entirely has this entire ordeal shocked me to the point that I'm now finding it all funny? I continued I mean you were laughing hysterically earlier when you were kidnapped. I continued to mentally sort through the day's acquaintances. I spent a lot of time with Ryu today, didn't I? Ryu is too friendly. Ryu smiled happily all night long and spent most of it trying to take care of me, but it was unpleasantly intrusive. He definitely went overboard with invading my personal space, and his excitable excitableness wore me out. What about Ragnar? It's weird. <laughs> He's weird. Ragnar is huge and dressed in bright, gaudy clothing, and his behavior is, is absurd, especially his weird expressions and ridiculous antics. It was really irritating. And then there's Sebastian. It's so easy to forget about him. He is timid or unremarkable no i think he's remarkable so i guess timid sebastian is a soft-spoken young man who's shy quiet and unassuming i on the other hand made an incredible impression on me he's peculiar he's quite pe the peculiar character but i think our first meeting was the strangest thing of all and unlike the other guys he doesn't seem to have any supernatural talent and there's victor a very mysterious man indeed um ability is terrifying it's disgusting that Victor drew me naked. If he can really see through people's clothing, it's repugnant. How does he live like that? I wince, wince I wince thinking about what he must see every time he's out in public. And his whole face is pierced. I wonder if he thinks it's attractive. Though I can't imagine why anyone would do that to their own body. I also met Vincent today. One of the men, one of the men who brought me here. Um... I don't understand Vincent at all. Has huge eyebrows, hides a nasty temper. I mean, he was quiet the whole time until, you know, we retaliated. So I don't think he, I think he reacts when how you react. 
I don't understand Vincent at all. Vincent didn't really say much, so it was hard for me to get a good feel for him, but he seems like a moody guy. And finally, there's Castle, the very first Quanzie I laid my eyes on after waking up back in a park. He is composed, he's aloof, he's a dumb jock. No, I find him very composed throughout the whole situation. Castle is a low key and quiet type, but at least he seems trustworthy. As I unpack my things, I slowly scroll through the events of this never ending day. Some of the Quanzies have odd names, I wonder if they're like superhero aliases. When I finish sifting through the contents of my backpack, I take another look around the room for any more surprises. I spot another door and cautiously open it only to find a normal looking bathroom. Having satisfied my curiosity, I settle into the bed feeling nice and comfy. Honestly, I don't think there's another anything better than lying beneath a soft blanket, especially as it melts your cares away. Feeling completely content, I doubt anything can ruin my mood right now. Not even the inevitably heated conversation I'm sure to have with my mom soon. I hope she didn't report me missing. But it's not long before the anxious thoughts that have been swirling around my head are gone, and I'm left with nothing but sweet dreams about my powers, thoughts of saving the world, and memories of the amazing company I now find myself in. Good. She needed this calmness. I wake up the next morning feeling refreshed. A bit anxious, I crack open the door leading out of my temporary lodging. No trespassing, violators will be punished. Punishment, shoving bricks into one's body. Signed, I'm Nikki Shen, the big boss. And find a note attached to it. Hmm, it seems they really do care about me. It's ridiculous, but still. Stepping out into the party room, I take a look around. Aw, Sebastian! Sebastian's so gorgeous. I love how his like hair makes like hearts. It's so cute. Sebastian is sleeping on a mattress amid a pile of pillows, so when he's played out looks almost almost picturesque. No one can disturb him, I quietly leave him be. Good morning, Spitfire. Come have breakfast with me. Rio walks around in a round a corner beaming happily. But as Sasharin, Shasharin, whatever that is, smile makes me feel a little sick. Do you ever not think about food? Actually, I think good morning, gorgeous Ryu, would be a much more pleasant greeting. Ryu tosses Vincent a cookie as he's, he and Castle walk into the room. But the wonderful smell wafting in from the kitchen has our stomachs growling, and we're all soon drawn into the other room, although I suspect some of us aren't heading there out of hunger. Oh, look at the little Gingy! How cute! It seems like a regular kitchen. Quite dark scheme, though. Victor is already eating breakfast. Ew, how can you eat so much food this early in the morning? Unable to help himself, Vince takes a jab at Victor. Wait, 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 wait. What is he wearing? Coco Raccoon. Okay. <laughs> though looking at his plate, I couldn't agree more. Victor really went overboard. A couple of steaks, a bunch of bacon wrapped sausages, sliced cheese, and various other meatloaves. I approve. Rhea reaches a, f reaches a fork towards one of the sausages. Demons, cook your own breakfast and leave mine alone. The fridge is for everyone. These Quanzies certainly seem like a fun bunch. They're strange yet silly. Hmm, I can definitely see myself becoming fast friends with them. I like how she quickly changed her mood now. You should eat too, by the way. I noticed you didn't have much, have much yesterday. There's some porridge over there, so help yourself. It'll do your body good. Ew, porridge? You eat that when you're sick. <laughs> Victor nods towards a tall, plate-covered cup, right before Ryu scoops it up. Stealing food from Melanie, shame on you! Ryu has other plans, however. Sitting down next to him, he begins to vigorously shove the porridge into my mouth. I can't eat them my- Noticing my plight cast wax Ryu on the head as he pl places a piece of chocolate on the table next to me. Oh, was it giving me chocolate? Looking down at it, Victor frowns. He then jumps to his feet and conjures over a blender for a few quick moments before handing me a delicious looking smoothie decorated with fresh flowers. You need vitamins. Drink. I sigh admiringly. You all certainly have a lot of time on your hands. And you, stop provoking these idiots. I'm honestly starting to feel a little guilty with how friendly everyone is. This why how awkward things were in the beginning. I just can't view these guys as baddies. Sure, I was frightened and disoriented yesterday and was a bit harsh with them, but they have yet to rebuke me and continue to treat me kindly. Feeling better. Not wanting to talk about it, I ignore Victor and change the subject. Where are Ragnar and Mark? Aren't we enough for you, our little star? No. Where's Mark? <laughs> Ray is way too much for me, but I don't want to spoil the mood, so I decide to keep quiet. All the attention I'm getting from these guys is really starting to confuse me. Suddenly, and out of nowhere. Right! Don't they- Don't they need me? Wasn't this the part of the story that they needed me? Like, I have to fall in love with one of them to give them my power? That was my power? <laughs> the ultimate support? Right? Or am I thinking of another game? Suddenly, and out of nowhere, Vincent thunderously stands up while knocking over his chair. You're all disgusting. 
Then both he and Cass leave the kitchen. We continue eating our breakfast, but everything feels so much so much more uncomfortable after witnessing that baffling display. Having finished my smoothie, I head into the party room and am met with a strange scene. Vince is sitting next to a sofa while Cass massages his neck. Purple eyes looks incredibly tired. Those two are way too touchy-feely with each other, aren't they? My eyes! Excuse you! Why did he take his shirt off? <laughs> Rio then bounds out of the kitchen with a mouthful of cookies and lands right next to Cass. And once with a moment, he rips off his own t-shirt. Can you rub your paws all over my back too? Whoa, how the heck is Ryu so athletic and fit? He's always eating like there's no tomorrow. Oh, a bare chest contest. Seems like I'm right on time. Bro, what is going on? Can y'all put your clothes back on? Ragnar enters the room and cheerfully removes his shirt too. Okay, so how the heck does he look so good too? Ragnar definitely looked much thinner beneath his clothes. Well, I guess if we're doing this, I need to keep up, although I don't have much to show off. Can you guys put your bodies away? <laughs> Victor is joining in too. Oh, here I go, guys. So I can let you guys see that. Because I did that for the others. So if you're a Victor simp, there you go. Here I thought he was the reserved type. Even though his body's thin and dry. Ew, thin and dry? His chest has me in awe. And his... Oh, God. <laughs> his nipples are pierced too. Oh, I like this. Bassy, show us your splendor. Let our little starlet go blind. Rhea begins pulling at Sebastian's clothes. And I'm not sure if he's trying to undress the guy or choke him. What is going on here? Why are they all stripping? I have witnessed a lot since arriving here, but this is completely over the line. Cover my face and look away. I just want all of it to end. Vincent suddenly jumps up from the floor and begins screaming angrily. Are we saving the world here or running a strip club? You freaks really pissed me off. This place is a goddamn madhouse. He's going ballistic. Can you stop embarrassing her already? It's enough that we dragged her here without explanation. But now you're shoving your naked bodies in her face. He's so enraged that everyone just stares at him in stunned silence. Until a serious looking Ryu finally says something. Shut up, would you? They're not coddling you because you're so wonderful. Sure, they may seem nice and friendly, but it's not because they want to be your friend. You're not just a Kwanzi. You're... Jinia. Jinia? Jinia? I really sometimes wonder if G is pronounced with a J because there's some like genie, you know? And did you know that genias are uniquely gifted with the ability to amplify other Quanzi's powers? But they can only affect one Quanzi at a time. Isn't that lovely? No one would care about you if not for that. Okay, so it is this game where, you know, I'm the ultimate support. Without warning and an obvious attempt to shut him up, Ryu punches Vincent right in the face. Jumping in, clearly concerned for his friend's safety, Cass drags the grim-faced Ryu away. You may be a good person, but believe me, if you didn't have the ability to amplify powers, none of these selfish bastards would be would do a damn thing for you. Kind loners route? Whoa! That's my route? Kind loners route? What other routes are there? I don't know. Well, you know, whatever. I'm going with it. Kind loners route. Seems like me. Whatever. <laughs> Everything seems to fit together, and the more painful it was. What an idiot I am that I trusted these people. Listen, I didn't trust them. Five through seven? What's that? I don't know how to read Roman numerals. Breathing hard to keep from crying, I slowly turned towards the door. It hurts. It hurts like hell. But I can't lose my dignity. Those damn hypocrites won't go won't get a tear out of me. Where is Mark? Fuck these guys. Where's Mark? <laughs> However, the door doesn't budge. Loosen my grip on the knob. I turn. Let me out, please. I want to leave. Oh, right! Basti's also here. I forgot. He's also, like, a cute contender. But again, I don't think we can go for him. Basti approaches and stares anxiously into my eyes. I apologize for what is happening. It's ugly. Can I at least be alone for a couple of minutes? The best I can do is ask the others to leave, but I need to stay. Alright, fine. So I'm not going to be left alone. Why does he need to stay? Maybe I can slip off to the guest room, but driving myself further into the corner would do nothing to solve my problem. You know, good on her for doing that. Like, you know, saying that, because I would do the opposite and just go to my room and cry it out. Because I don't know what to do. <laughs> I usually cry because either I'm very frustrated about the situation, or because everything's out of my hands and I can't do anything about it. Is why I cry most of the time. Uh, aside, you know, sad things happening or watching a sad movie or whatever. As a ponder of predicaments, Ragnar orders everyone else out of the room, which grants me a small shred of hope. You're too nervous. That can lead to a terrible consequences. Terrible consequences? My voice cracks and then I realize I can't bring myself to continue this conversation. Quarterly stare, sitting down near 
Sitting down near the door, I cross my arms as I watch the guys leave the room. We're finally alone, Bassy sits down next to me. I can just wait here until you let me out, you know. I don't want to see you anymore. I have no desire to harm you. I just ask you to listen to me. You expect me to trust you after all of this. Listen, listen, listen. Bassy did nothing. Bassy literally did nothing. He was just chilling. He was just sleeping. The, the other guys, though, however, were like, Hey, let me show you what I got. Trying to, trying to lure your heart with their bods. Which doesn't work for me, because I don't want to see all that. <laughs> I get flustered just seeing 2D men take off their shirts, right? Can you imagine what happens when a real life person <laughs> does that in front of me? <laughs> Gone. I'm out of the room. Anyway, thank you guys for watching today's episode. Stay beautiful, and I will see you guys in the next one.